Okay, what we have here is a thermo time switch. And this thing is supposed to be used to activate what they call the cold start valve on a fuel injected 280 Datsun 280Z. And the way it works is when the engine is cold, whatever that means, uh, this switch closes and there's a fuel injector that just squirts extra fuel directly into the intake manifold, not tied into the EFI, not pulsing anything. It just squirts gasoline directly into the intake manifold. And the reason it's called thermo times, it's based on the fact that there's it's cold and it'll only do that for a certain length of time because the idea is you don't want to flood the engine because for some reason it doesn't start. You don't want to just keep pumping more and more gas in. So it doesn't start or some other problem. You know? But the the symptoms I've been having is the car won't start, it's very hard to start. If I manually close the circuit, car starts right up and within one second it starts and then once it starts it's good for the rest of the day. In other words, it doesn't need the thermo time once the engine's been started. So I'm hoping that this is the problem. I don't. The only problem I really have is I don't know what the actual operating specifications are. It's a little confusing. When I've gone back and read, I've got some conflicting uh, information. One place says anything under 100 degrees, this thing should turn on at least for a, a few seconds. Uh, the this factory service manual says something that about it's good from anywhere from 55 to 77 degrees, whatever that means, you know. So it's just it's a little confusing. I've got a new one on the way. When it gets here, I'll test it. But I'll show you my test setup first. I've got it connected to the meter. What you're seeing right there is about 70 ohms. That's essentially the resistor or the heating element. It's a bimetallic strip surrounded by a heating element. The heating element turns on and that's what stops it no matter what after X number of seconds goes by. The heating element will force it to open. But now we'll connect up to the other side. So bear with me one second. I am now going to be running. I'm now disconnecting the heater. Now only the only the one connector. I had the red connector hooked up. Now it's the white connector. And I don't worry, I have confirmed. I've got good continuity. You know, this is important, probably just something to talk about too, is make sure your test equipment works. In other words, you should make sure that this cable is connected to the meter and everything works there because your test equipment can really throw you off if it's not hooked up right. You know, you could have a break in this white wire and be chasing your tail and so, yeah, you have to always check that kind of stuff out. But as you can see, the meter's reading open. I mean, this way is closed circuit. This is open. This is the 100 range. I'll okay, so it's got some it's got some resistance on the R times 100, so that's 5,000 ohms. Um, no. That's not right. Not 5,000 ohms. That makes no sense on any level. I'm sorry, is that 50 times 100? Yeah, it's 5,000 5, ohms. And you know, that might very well be the, uh, some of that might just be the water. Okay, here, well, for one thing I know I have it hooked up. That confirms, remember I said, make sure your equipment's hooked up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to withdraw this out. It's cold, so now there's no water. Oh, it already dropped down. Yeah, it went down to a, almost 100K. So some of this is just, what I'm reading here is the actual resistance of the water. Look at that. I'm going to just completely disconnect it at this point. Okay, so here's, I'm, this is the heater bimetallic strip. That's not being used right now. And there you go. Now that's a, that's in the R10,000 range, so it's already gone up a lot. But obviously this thing is ice water cold. Uh, just to test, just to test, I'm going to take the, the white lead, excuse me, ground it. There, let's go to R1, R1. Grounding it now. Okay, so we know that this is right. One of these is the heater. I'll just use the same clip. Hold on, I know it's kind of shaky. Much, my bad. There's the heater, 70 ohms. Excuse me, when I hook up the other side. There's the alleged ground when it's cold. Open. And again, I'll expand the scale. So at the times 10,000, I'm at 700,000 ohms. Okay, so. You know, I don't know what that is. That could just be 
it, it could be that the contacts are corroded and it's trying to close but it can't I don't know put it back in cold water makes no difference oh look at that that's me that's me dropping it in the water see now I completely submerged it in water so I'm back to reading the resistance of the water so obviously though on the R1 scale this one. And one of, the, one of the things that this is an advantage of using these old school Simpson meters for this is because you do have the selectable scale. I first did this using my auto ranging digital meter, and it's a real pain, okay? Because it's, you know, it's trying to auto range so many mega ohms. You know, all you want to know is it zero or is it like a couple ohms? Using the R1 scale on an old on an analog meter gives you a very clear indication of what's going on. So anyway, I'll be replacing this thermo time switch, and hopefully that'll be the end of my cold start problems. Well, I'd like to heat this up, maybe with a flame to see if it makes. No, I know it's not. I know it's not going to make differences. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't uh, open up. It doesn't close. I mean, so it's open as though the engine's warmed up. Clearly, this is a, uh, you know, that's probably just above freezing because I have melting ice in there. So. There's obviously something wrong with this, and we'll get back to it. When I get the new one in, which should come in any day, I'll conduct the same test before I install it, just to make sure it works, and try to figure out what its temperature ranges are for people who are interested in that kind of thing. Anyway, more later. Thanks.